Well, good, good morning, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, it's incredible to see so many of you in huge numbers, but if you would all like to take your seats, and there's plenty of room up at the front here. Um, good morning, everyone. You're all very, very welcome to accelerate the transition to a net zero future. Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Dervin MacDonald, and it's a privilege to join you once again for what I know is going to be a productive, provocative and thought-provoking day. Uh, the conference is brought to you by ESB and the International Institute of International and European Affairs and we're delighted to be hosting this timely and hugely significant conference here at the magnificent Dublin Royal Convention Centre. A special welcome as well to Orla, Vanessa and her colleague Michael who are going to be signing um, for us today. To any of the speakers, just to make sure that you walk behind our signers if you're walking um, off stage right. Um, throughout the course of the day, we're going to be hearing from a lineup of global and Irish policymakers, thought leaders, industry representatives and academics who are all going to share with us their vision for a resilient, inclusive and sustainable sustainable net zero future. We hope that this conference is going to showcase um, a, a really, really strong vision of how we can transition to net zero, uh, a transition that leaves no one behind. Just a few housekeeping notes. Um, uh, please take notes of the fire exits around you in the room. Obviously, the door which you enter, there's two at the back, one to my left and also over to the right. But you might take a quick look to see where your nearest one is. I see that a lot of you are using laptops. So if you are, can you just make sure the leads and the bags don't um, form any trip uh, hazard as you do. Um, we do want you to put your mobile phones just for the courtesy of our speakers to silent but it is a conversation that we want you to join so we really would encourage you to share the conversation to a wider audience wherever you are on your social me media channel of choice using the hashtag accelerate to net zero. That's accelerate to net zero and it's just up behind me. Um, we also want you to engage in the conversation in the room and because it worked so well on the last occasion we're also going to be using Slido and so if you can um, put, hold your phone up to the QR code there and you'll be able to be brought into the Slido app and if you can we would really encourage you to submit your questions and your observations for every single keynote speaker and panel that we have and if you can it would be really really helpful just if you would let me know um, who you are what your affiliation is so I can share your question. It really, really worked the last time and we would really actively encourage you to do so again. You'll see another uh, QR code on your lanyard and that will um, bring you to today's agenda, the full programme agenda and the menu for lunchtime. We're going to have uh, tea and coffee in the foyer and lunch will take place at about 25 past 12 uh, for further networking. It's a really, really busy agenda with no less than three keynote speakers, two panel discussions as well as a little fireside chat or two and we do have a lot of topics to diverse today. We're going to exploring the major challenges and the opportunities or what you'll be calling the horsemen and superheroes um, after you hear Michael Liebreich speak um, very, very shortly. We're also going to discuss the unique transition to net zero here in Ireland, the policy uh, and framework that we have at present and may need for the future as well as the geopolitics that are affecting not, also, not only decarbonisation but also that important just transition. Um, these are just the tip of the iceberg of some of the topics that we will be exploring through today's conference and please, as I say, if you've got your own, bring them through the Slido app. Um, the panel discussions, we're going to be hearing from regulatory authorities, academia, policy and industry leaders, again, to discuss those big challenges and opportunities. As we know, every single sector of our society is going to have a role to play in the transition to a net zero future, including our vibrant cultural sector, which never fails to hold us to account. Artists are the antennae of the race, and they have played and will continue to play a pivotal role in helping people to understand the climate crisis and to make that transition. So we thought it was fitting, before we welcomed our first keynote speaker, to welcome the writer, performer, poet, and cultural consultant, the wonderful Chandrika Narayanan Mohan, to the stage for a very, very special poem, which I know she's going to introduce. So I'll hand over to you, Chandrika. Thank you. Aquarian power. Between the shoulder blades of the Wicklow Hills lies a watery heart. Nestled amongst the granite, its enormous valves open and close, rush through with the power of mountain lake by day, pumping softly upwards by night. In this valley, 
carved by the muscle of ancient ice, dotted with the remnants of mining lives, is a place colored with names that have graced tongues across centuries. Tomanina, Glendossan Valley, Loch Nahanagan, Loch Nahunkan, Lake of the Water Beast. In 1968, a dream for a gentle Leviathan is made real. In the footsteps of Ardna Krushna and a quiet revolution sparked by increasing demand, to the tune of the monkeys, the Beatles, the Dixies, to the tune of De Valera, Lynch, Murray, a giant mighty enough to power a nation is conceived without a feather of soot or smoke. It begins. Earth moving and history making, the parish priests in high viz ask for a blessing from above amidst hundreds of workers from home and afar as a hill packed with potential gets ready to burst into life. With millions of tons of granite shifted and moved, the hill's apex is softened against the horizon to make way for tunnel, for cavern, for reservoir, for ambition, for security, for future. The cavern becomes cathedral, where a tiny Europe of workers gather. The Irishmen pray to St. Barbara by torchlight as hard-hatted clergymen cross themselves echoing. From the toolbox of giants, a stator, rotor, transformers wind their way from across Europe to the heights of Ireland and into the Wicklow Gap before partaking in a dance of magnificent precision. Enormous pipes are carefully lowered, shot-blasted behemoths welded edge to edge, watertight and perfect alongside snail-like intakes made to dampen the thunderous surge. In 1974, she comes into her Aquarian power. The reservoir, asphalt lined by shirtless men under the blazing sun, now filled to the brim, ready and waiting until needed, until feet cross thresholds after work. Kettles click on across a nation. Lights snap on, heat flickers into life. We are in peak time and the grid calls for assistance to smooth out the demand curve. And so she is summoned, leaps into action in seconds as liquid rumble rushes down through the mountain through pipes, turbines spinning dizzyingly, generating electricity for residents going about their business. 50 years later, an orange hard hat rests by the tea station on top of colorful lockers. In a building camouflage against the fertile brown of blanket bog, as sea blue coils buzz behind curtains of rain. Hidden amongst the glint of wet and damp lies a system that has never failed, never faltered. Now control center, beating heart of a hydro fleet on the Shannon, Liffey, Lee, Urn, Claddy. Turlock Hill, dotted with wet gorse and black-faced sheep, its summit bursting with dwarf flower, cowberry, crowberry, heather, purple moor grass and sphagnum moss, testament to reseeding by a generation looking ahead. And here we stand now, between foothill and summit, to look again ahead to protect, to accelerate, challenged with balancing ethics and ambition, moving with water, wind, the power within them, working to electrify and decarbonize for a net zero future, to see with the clarity of flowing mountain water, to be as resilient and steadfast as a lake powered giant humming softly inside a hill. Thank you.